Hi, I want to talk to you today about adaptive protection, an insider risk management feature in Microsoft Purview. A recent white paper by Microsoft talked about a top data security concern by organizational leaders, and that is the insider risk threat. An overwhelming 63% of data breaches, in fact, stem from within an organization. And although cybersecurity teams have always been focused on the external threat, and they should continue to do that, they often overlook the insider risk threat as well. What do I mean by insider risks? I mean malicious or negligent office workers, uh, security evaders, third-party vendors, and even the departing employee scenario. So to showcase uh, adaptive protection inside insider risk management, I'm going to choose one of those I believe quite common scenarios, and that is a departing, and in this case, disgruntled employee at an organization, and the sequence of events that might transpire prior to them leaving. In this case, Jane Doe was our fictitious employee, and before resigning, she decides to download some confidential files to USB. And she intentionally chooses to do this before resigning with the hope that she will stay under some kind of a radar and her activities won't be monitored and um, noticed. Only then does she hand in her official resignation to HR and start that process. Throughout the course of the next couple of weeks, while she is still working at the organization, she might start to exfiltrate some data, a few files at a time, maybe downloading some files to her personal Dropbox, sending files as attachments to her personal email. And then, because she's disgruntled in this scenario, she goes back to SharePoint or OneDrive and deletes some files out of the live library, as well as going into the first and second stage recycle bin and deleting them from there. So what does this look like in an organization if they have no purview controls in place? So this would be worst case scenario. First of all, the organization would have no visibility into the sensitive data that was being downloaded. They couldn't differentiate, let's say, what was confidential versus what wasn't confidential. The Official resignation being handed into HR, in fact, doesn't change any kind of a perceived risk level for Jane at all. And those exfiltration events, although certainly audited, would likely go unnoticed. They might be lost in a sea of other activity that is being logged across the tenant. And when files are deleted out of both the live library location and the first and second stage recycle bins, they are in fact permanently destroyed. So how can we use adaptive protection and insider risk management to change this sequence of events? Well, insider risk management understands data-related risky activity. And what I'm showing here is just a very small sample of some of the things it is aware of. Um, these particularly right back to the scenario I just described with Jane Doe and the departing employee scenario. Office indicators. It knows when you're downloading files from SharePoint, when you're downgrading sensitivity labels. So perhaps you can open them up um, af after you've departed the organization and still read those files. It knows when you've deleted SharePoint files and a whole bunch of other activities and indicators it um, can detect. It can even understand things done at the device level, copying files to a USB drive, printing files, deleting files. And it not only understands activities in isolation, but also when they're sequenced together and the potential risk of that. An example would be downgrading sensitivity labels on some files sitting in SharePoint, then downloading them to your device, then copying them to USB, and then going back to SharePoint and deleting them after. That sequence of events tells a very different story than if you were to look at each activity in isolation. So adaptive protection inside insider risk management really looks at the user context, in this case, a departing employee, and the intent across all of the risky activity that's being done. Adaptive protection assigns a risk level to users based on this. So in this um, graph, you can see going from left to right, we've got no risk, minor, moderate, and elevated, all based on the user context and the risky activity that they may be doing. 
So if we go back to our Jane Doe scenario of the departing employee, you will see that Adapter Protection will be monitoring not only Jane, but all users in the organization on the context and the uh, data related activity and assign a risk level. In this case, Jane Doe would more than likely be assigned an elevated risk level due to her activity. So knowing this, how can this help inform some of the other purview controls to protect us against this insider risk? Once a user's risk level is determined, so Jane Doe elevated risk in this case, certain data loss prevention policy actions can be taken dynamically. So if we go from bottom uh, to top, maybe if a user is at no or minor risk, you might just so show DLP policy tips. If they go to moderate, you might block some action, but allow the end user to override it. Or at the most extreme case in elevated risk, maybe you will just outright block it, not allowing any override at all. So it's dynamically adjusting the DLP policy action that is taken based on the user's risk level. The next control is in preview right now, Entra ID conditional access. This is dynamically applying the conditional access um, actions and policy based on a user's risk level. Similar examples on the right hand side, as you go from no risk up to elevated, it becomes more and more restricted on what the conditional access policy does. And the last one is data lifecycle management. This is a retention label policy that is automatically configured for you. And when unlabeled files are deleted from SharePoint or OneDrive, they are preserved in the hidden preservation hold library on that same site. Or if uh, exchange emails are deleted, it is preserved in the recoverable items partition in the exchange mailbox. So what I'm going to show you now is a quick demo of what these features look like inside Microsoft Purview and Entra ID. Here, I'm going to show you what adapter protection looks like inside Microsoft Purview. I'm currently in the new Microsoft Purview portal within Insider Risk Management, and one of the tabs on the left-hand side is Adaptive Protection. You will see this is, says it's in preview. If I go to the dashboard, I have already enabled Adaptive Protection in this particular tenant. That is done down here under Adaptive Protection Settings. Once you do this, it takes up to 72 hours for this um, feature to be enabled across the board. And there's a few things uh, it can do for you when it does the setup. If you want to do a quick setup and have some of the things configured for you, this is a list of all of the things that Insider Risk Management will do for you. It will create a data leaks insider risk policy. It will configure the three uh, risk levels for a user, minor, moderate, and elevated with default settings. Um, it will create two data loss prevention policies, one for teams and exchange, the other for endpoint DLP. It will behind the scenes configure a new data lifecycle management policy for the preservation of those deleted unlabeled files. And uh, lastly, it will create a new conditional access policy in report only mode to block access for users um, uh, with an elevated risk level. So I'm going to show now that that's been configured in this particular tenant what that looks like. On your dashboard, you will see all of the users and what risk level they've been assigned. In this tenant, um, I don't have any users that are at those three uh, levels yet, but you can see both the data loss prevention policy uh, policies, those two, and a conditional access policy has been configured. Um, a few things you can set up. This is the default setting, um, but you can modify these to suit your own requirements. You can see the three list risk levels it has assigned. So if we just edit the elevated one in here, you detect the activities that you want to um, look for. Right now, the default is any, but you can see all of the activities that you can um, parse out if you want to specifically focus in on particular activities within here. 
And um, what is the detection window where you will notice the number of times those activities must be detected uh, within this time period. So I'm going to leave it as is. You do the same for moderate and minor. You can look by default seven days back on previous activity. You can go all the way up to 30 days if you want. So if you think back to the departed employee scenario where Jane Doe was exfiltrating content prior to her handing in her resignation and being included in um, a departing employee scenario, then uh, that activity, in fact, would be detected. So some settings in here for you to do. If there are any users um, that have met any of these conditions, you will see them listed here at the associated risk level. And then you will see the conditional access policy that was automatically generated here, blocking access to Office apps. So I'm going to select that and view it. Takes me into Enter ID, where it will show me the conditional access policy that it created. And you will see the condition that it's looking at to detect an elevated risk user. One condition is selected. I'm just going to select that and you will see here insider risk assessing the user's risky data related activity inside insider risk management so if i click the one included you will see it's detected elevated um, i can have different policies for different risk levels here this one is in report only mode you might want to do that uh, while you're assessing uh, the follow-on effects of this policy I go back to adaptive protection at the two DLP policies that were created. I'll just select the, this one. You can see it's configured different actions based on minor, moderate, and elevated user risk. If I edit this, it takes me into data loss prevention where I can view the settings of this policy. So it's going against Exchange and Teams chat and channel messages. And you can see here it's got two rules. The first one is um, looking at the insider risk level for adaptive protection of elevated. You can see it's uh, notifying users, restricting access for external users, and sending alerts. The second rule is looking for an insider risk level of minor and moderate and uh, not restricting access. So I'm just going to edit the first one. And you can see here, you can select the insider risk level for adaptive protection. Once you've enabled this on insider risk management, you're going to see this option when you're configuring a DLP policy for Exchange and Teams. So I can select whatever risk level I want as a condition to take the appropriate action. So the last thing I want to talk about is the third piece, the data lifecycle management piece. There, in fact, is currently nothing to configure on that one. That is done automatically for you, and it will detect any deleted, unlabeled content and start preserving the content in those workloads. So I hope you found this uh, quick demo helpful and you see the use case for the adaptive protection feature inside Insider Risk Management. Thanks for watching.